Welcome in and welcome back. We are here uh, with another questionnaire type video. Look, um, I promised 30 videos in 30 days and I'm really sort of starting to uh, run out of steam, which is sad as this is a sort of general interest channel and I am only, uh, at this point 19 days into things, I am, it seems, an incredibly boring person who has absolutely no personal life, nothing really of substance to talk about. <clears throat> and I know, uh, look, I went running not too long ago and uh, sweated out all of the product I had in my hair, so now it looks like I have feathered bangs, but I promise you, I am not that cool. <clears throat> I am not that cool. What I did, what I have done, what I am cool enough to have done, is collected... 25 truth or dare questions from random places around the internet um which i forgot to credit because look the site had like 500 truth or dare questions on it so i just copied and pasted um what i believe to have been a 25 question clip so what i'm going to do is go through these and jen at Ifers Inklings, if you want to do these, that would be cool too. As long, along with Sally, Joe, M. Cooper, Monse, you've got to start making content eventually. Uh, Steph and Skip, if you want to do this while uh, taking drags out of your pipe, that's okay with me. Argyle Dinosaur, you can ignore my prompts as long as you want. That's not going to make them go away. And Sylvia, I think something general interest like this would be fun to see from you as well. <clears throat> 25 questions. Uh, let's get right into things. Number one, what is that what? I should have read these before copying and pasting them, let alone turning on the... What is that one thing you would never do even if someone offered you all the money in the world? What is one thing? I'm assuming this means what is one thing you would never do even if offered all the money in the world? Um... Well, no, I'd probably do that for 50 bucks. There's, so I don't think I could ever, I could ever bring myself to, um, all the money in the world. That's a hard pass. Number two, what physical feature do you get complimented on the most? Um, shoulders, maybe? Uh, when I was in high school and it was uh, Fridays for football and you would wear your jerseys to school, uh, girls would often ask me why I was wearing my shoulder pads, which was a silly question because I was not wearing shoulder pads. And if I was, what business would it be of yours? Uh, I got that when I was younger a lot. I was a lot buffer back then. Uh, in my adult, probably my lips. I get a lot of comments on my lips, even from strangers, which should weird me out more than it does, I suppose. Uh, it is a weird thing to get complimented on. Uh, number three, what is the quality or characteristic that you would like, that you would like to change about you, um, that I would like to change about myself? Probably the fact that I'm a persnickety prick who picks on people's English. Um... I think that I would do much better in the world if I were not. So, having listened to a lot of Jordan Peterson over the past few years, I've picked up on the fact that I am what is known as disagreeable. And if I were not, were I not disagreeable, I think that I would be in a much better place on a life scale. I think that I would do better at work. I would do better in relationships if, if there were any. I would do better in um, socialization. I would do better with individuals. I would do better with, um, I think, a lot of the internet stuff that I would like to do at some point. I want to get around to making short films, maybe even feature-length films. I'd like to get around to a having a skit channel. I want to do a sort of local news type YouTube channel. Uh, if I were better with people, if I were any good at all with people, I would probably be able to do those things and pull them off at this point in life. I don't know that any of those things are ever going to happen just because I'm no good 
with people. Have you ever fall? Have you fallen in love with a? <sighs> have you ever fallen in love with a friend of your partner? Has anyone noticed? Friend of a partner? Probably not. Um, so there was one relationship uh, in which I found myself uh, where I was absolutely head over heels for the woman. Um, and I won't say that I was in love with her sister. That is certainly not the case. There was no romantic sort of entanglement there. But um, I really got along with her sister. And if so, if we lived in an age or a country in which arranged marriages were a thing, and I was arrangedly married to her sister, um, I don't think either one of us would have had a problem necessarily with it if that was just the way that the cards fell, uh, the way the dice rolled. Um, and it was weird because there's, I think there's just certain people. They both complemented certain aspects of my personality, and I think that's a weird dynamic. You, when you find someone like like matching colors, um, you get along with whoever you get along with on certain levels in certain ways. But there's just certain people with whom you vibe, with whom you click, uh, and this was one of those um, situations. To the fact where has anyone noticed? I think there were times uh, she would not say so, but I think that she was jealous to a degree, which is a strange thing to make sense. But I, I, I could understand it because of the way that her sister and I's humor clicked. Uh, we really got along in that way. Um, we were able to make jokes between us that uh, the woman whom I was dating and I, I, I don't think those jokes would have clicked as well. Uh, in fact, I know they didn't. I don't stop making jokes, and it gets me into trouble sometimes. Um, what's the craziest thing that has happened to you in a mall? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all we have time for today. Um, there was a time in my life uh, where I would take any chance to get down and dirty. And um, the woman whom I was dating at the time, we found ourselves in a mall. In said mall, uh, there was a dressing room. And we were going to town, uh, attempting to be, oh, God, I mean, I must have been, God, I must have been 17. I must have been 17 at the time. And this is all allegedly. I mean, maybe none of this ever happened. You don't know. You don't know. And I guess that we were not being as quiet as uh, two lovebirds in a dressing room in public should be. Because you should be. You shouldn't be there at all, okay? There's rules to things uh, for a reason, and allegedly we were. Uh, uh, not realistically, we weren't there, but uh, apparently things had gotten a little out of hand to the point where uh, the staff was informed, and they, they turned off the lights. Uh, I didn't know they could do that. Apparently they can. They have lights to the dressing room. We thought we were in the... We thought we were cool we thought we were in the open i mean our line of reasoning was that there was no way there were cameras in the dressing room it was a stupid thing to think uh next have you ever peed in a pool uh, i can't swim i can't swim so normally i i can't pee in a pool i have to pee into a pool uh, it's a little bit of a different process. You're walking along, you find a nice looking pool, you have to stand beside it. Less privacy, much less privacy. Peeing into a pool than peeing in a pool. Uh, I don't recommend it. Uh, next, what is the most stupid thing you've done in front of a crowd? I was walking along one day and I found this nice pool. Uh, get, you, get you right on a couple lists. 
do the wrong thing in front of a pool. Next, uh, what's the first thing you would do if you were invisible? What is the first thing you would do if you were invisible? Stand around in the women's locker room. I don't know anyone who has a different answer to that. Does, is there anyone who has a different answer to that? Surely not. Surely that is the answer, right? See, this is, this is a sneaky question. This is a question that's only asked in order to get you caught. That's it. There's no good answer there. In fact, I think that's the only correct answer there. You sneak into the women's locker room. You're invisible. Everyone wins. Um, next, have you ever been hinted or has... I don't think this is English. Have you ever been hinted or has overstepped someone of the same sex? What happened? How did you react? Have you ever been hinted or has overstepped someone of the same sex? I'm assuming this is young people jargon for has anyone of the same sex ever hit on you? Um, I have an entire Ask Adrian Anything video about that, so I'm not going to take the time to answer it again here. Um, it is the one about, do you have a library card? I, I think I'm on Ask Adrian Anything 14 or 15. So depending on where you're finding this video, it's in the first 15 video. I don't know what number it is. Um, next, how many people have you kissed? Jesus Christ. I'm going to go Bill Clinton on you. When you say kiss, do you mean with tongue? How young are we going here? I mean, I, I've been kissing ladies since sixth grade, going back, all the way back. Sixth grade, baby. Uh, how many women have you, how many people have you kissed? They've all been women, by the way. Um, we're probably talking kissed? Jesus. Um, kissed? How do you remember that? Kissed? How many people have you kissed? Oh man, that's a low bar. I, f I feel your pain. I feel a couple other things if you're willing, you know what I mean? Uh, how many people have you kissed? Kissed? Uh, we're probably talking 70s. We're probably talking in a, somewhere between 60 and 80, probably. Kissed? That's an insane question. That is insane. That is not meant for that is not meant for someone my age. That is not meant for someone my age. That is obviously a question written for a much younger audience. Um, what's the most embarrassing thing that has happened while hooking up? There's no way that's for a younger audience if this is the very next question. What's the most embarrassing thing that has happened while you were hooking up? Um, I pulled my hamstring. I pulled my hamstring. That's a good one. That's a good one. I uh, in the winters, I'm I'm what is I have I'm what is known as a cheap ass. So in the summers, my apartment is hot. In the winters, my apartment is cold. And I had a girl hit me up. I mean, this must have been January or February. At the time, I was living in a coat. I was living in my coat. I was keeping my apartment at 53 degrees because it was cold outside. And she hit me up. God, I mean, it must have been 11 midnight. Uh, wanting to run through, as it were. Um, so I, <laughs> she was probably 20 minutes away. So I turned the heat up, knowing that's not going to be all right for her. Um, no one likes to see their breath while they're um, while they're doing the dirty and um, so your apartment might warm up and it might warm up in 10 15 minutes your body your body does not um, your body does not and we were in the middle of things and my hamstring cramped up it was so I, it was bad I mean felt like you know that feeling if you've never had a cramp like in a big muscle 
You know that feeling like when you get your, uh, your flu shot right in your shoulder there? It feels like that, <clears throat> but from a needle the size of this pin. It feels like someone's just jamming a, a pin in your muscle. It ended that, that uh, encounter. It did. Uh, next, who in the world would you not rescue from a burning building? Oh, uh, I can't swim. Next, what illegal thing have you done recently? Public urination. You go running and there's no bathrooms open. Public urination, it's an easy answer. Uh, how many immediate family members do you have? I don't have any. I live on my own. Um, but if you're talking about the family in which you grew up, if you're talking about the family up in which you grew, the family up in which I grew, uh, I had two siblings, a mother and a father. So uh, five person family. Next question. Which one would you trade for $10 million? Um, hmm. $10 million, you can have all four. Next, what would you do if you went number two in a public restroom and there was no toilet paper? It's a tough place to be. I guess you got to take it all back and find the next restroom. Next, who was the last person you prank called? prank call um my older brother baby baby how you doing baby it's grandma how come you ain't calling me you better call me i got family new for you um you do that and you're not in front of somebody it's a pretty good prank call um What's something no one knows about you? Well, I guess I can say it now. We're only on the internet. I came here to kick bubble gum and chew ass. And I'm all out of ass. Have you ever pretended to like a gift that you actually hated? If you were watching this and you know me personally... Do not buy me gifts. Don't buy me a present. Don't buy me anything. Don't get things for me. I only hate them. I only hate gifts. I'm no good getting gifts. Don't, don't buy me anything. If I wanted anything, I would have it. That is a very real thing. Um, if there was something that I wanted, I would have it. So if you buy me something, it just means I'm probably never going to use it or I'm going to have to throw it away. Don't buy me things. It's uh, regrettable. <sighs> if your best friend had body odor, would you tell them? Oh, that's easy. I wouldn't have a best friend. Uh, but there is, I don't know if you knew this, there is a difference between being nice and being kind. Being nice means you want people to like you. Being kind means you want people to like themselves. I am not a nice person. I am a kind person. So point and case, if someone has something in their teeth and they're speaking to you, if you were nice, you do not tell them. If you were kind, you want the best for that individual. You want them to not have to have something in their teeth when they're talking to other people, so you tell them. If you were nice, that person has no idea you noticed once they notice, so they still like you. If you're kind... Saying that is embarrassing to everyone, and they might not like you. I'll tell you if your ass stank. How many times have you been in love? I don't believe in love. I think that love is a combination of proximity and the fear of dying alone. That's not true. I believe that love is a combination of comfort and the fear of dying alone. Oh, that's good. That's much better. Love is a... Yeah. Love is a combination of comfort and the fear of dying alone. 
Put that on my tombstone. Have you ever faked the big O? Yeah. Yeah, I have. Um, maybe I'm not a kind person. There was a time. It was again in public. And... Um, She stank. She was uh, not having a particularly fresh day. And I um, I pretended we wrapped things up. Have you ever cheated on an exam? I didn't know that these questions were so personal. Anyone that I uh, tagged at the beginning, do not feel compelled to do this if you are uncomfortable with this. Uh, it's not the cheating on an exam thing that that it drew me to I did not know that these these questions are I'd say out there but they're closer to being in there where are we at have you ever cheated on an exam you're goddamn right I have um the best story I have about it is the second best story I have about it is probably from community college I had this big oaf of a professor uh, who, from whom I was taking American history, 1900 to 1950 maybe, something like that. I don't remember. The class was awful. And we had a quiz every day. We had a quiz. Um, and what you would do is he would just ask true or false questions based on the reading from the night before. He was awful, the class sucked, the reading was boring. I had to find a way to cheat. I had to find a way out of it. So what I would do, um, for true, we had to write a plus. For false, we had to write a circle. Uh, draw a plus, draw a circle, what, however you want to say it. Uh, those were the symbols for true or false. Instead of writing true or false. That's how you know you're a bullshit professor if you have to have your students memorize a system for truth or false in your class. It's true or false, pal. So what I would do, we were lined, we, our desks were in rows. So you were right in front of somebody, right behind somebody. Me, being the idiot that I am, I always sat in front because, was I working overnights at the time? I can't remember. But for whatever reason, probably because he was boring, I always had trouble staying awake in his class. So I would sit up front so I couldn't fall asleep. There's no way I can fall asleep. He's looking right at me. The son of a bitch is looking right at me. I gotta be awake. Until we were taking our quiz, at which time I would hunker back in my seat real low, real far back. And the guy behind me always did his reading, always, I don't know, maybe he was a history major, I can't tell. Always did it. So I'd sit back there, he'd read the question, and I'd listen for or bada bing, bada boom, I know if it's a plus or a circle. That's how I got through that class. <clears throat> the next, the best way I ever cheated I was wearing a t-shirt for my keyboarding class, freshman year in high school. Anyone who knows anything about me knows that I am a Luddite. I, so freshman year in high school, my family had only had a computer for a year. That's how good I was at keyboarding. Um, my entire... Middle school, I think we went to a computer lab like three times. That's back when there were computer labs instead of being computers in every room. Um, my high school senior year, we had a classroom set of laptops. The whole school, classroom set of laptops. We got to use them one time in my physics class. And I did not know, I, I very embarrassing story. Um, I kind of bullied everyone else out of the way in my group 
so that I was the guy with the computer. And when it was time to start things, I had to ask where the mouse was. So they laughed at me and took the computer away. Probably for the best, we got a good grade. But my freshman year, I had keyboarding. And our final was that she would she had a uh, a blank keyboard printed out on a piece of paper, and you just had to fill it out. Boom, 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 boom. There were kids in that class that were done in fucking three minutes. I had no idea. So you've got the the hem. So like like on your sleeve here, you got the hem. I on the bottom of my shirt. I wore a white shirt. I flipped that hem up and left to right wrote the entire keyboard with a slash between the rows. And I still got a B. I don't know how I did it, but I still fan managed to figure out how to get a B. Next question. Have you ever run over an animal? No, I have never run over anything um, walking on more than two legs. Next question. Would you ever take steroids? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, this is a more serious question than I think it, it would often get passed off to be. There is a documentary called Bigger, Stronger, Faster um, that I think is on YouTube now. It was originally, I believe, on Netflix. And this was a decade ago. One of the main antagonists is Joe Biden. But there are people in there who swear up and down that steroids are no worse than the person who is on them. Um... That said, I am worried about some of the negative side effects. I am afraid. I don't want to lose my hair. Um, I think I, I might be in danger of that anyway. Um, I am not as big as I was. I am not. I am a lot chunkier than I was. Uh, I think that with a, a single cycle, I could probably expel dispel both of those uh, nasty things about myself. I could probably with, uh, what am I doing? Why am I rationalizing this? No, no, I don't think I would. Um, so that is all I have for today. 25-ish uh, questions from Truth or Dare. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you back tomorrow for another video here on the channel. And I hope to see you also on Strip Cover Lit for uh, tomorrow, I believe, is a writer's quote. I am not sure. 